Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rahul Reddy from Andrew Care Andrology Institute. Today we will be discussing about azospermia. Azospermia means zero sperm count. So people who are trying for kids, generally uh, from female sites, gynecologists will do scans and hormonal evaluation. But male point of view, generally semen analysis is the first test we do for fertility evaluation. So here, if in some patients, if there is zero sperm count, the report comes as azospermia because azospermia means zero sperm count. So now what has to be done? So zero, uh, when, when there is azospermia, people get panic uh, because suddenly if they hear that there is no sperm count, they don't know what to do. Uh, generally they rush uh, to the clinics and they'll have a lot of doubt, anxiety. Uh, most of these couples with uh, couples with severe anxiety, they keep uh, firing questions to the doctor. So now, in whenever there is azospermia, first thing we have to know is there are two types of azospermia. One is obstructive azospermia. Second is non-obstructive azospermia. So now, what is obstructive azospermia? So first thing what you have to know is sperm production happens in the testicles. So if there is normal production in the testis, but if there is blockage in the sperm tube, then we have to, we will call it as obstructive azospermia. So here at least they are, uh, one way they are safe because whenever we uh, want uh, children, we can put a needle into the testis, we can take sperms and we can do IVF or else uh, if uh, some, if they want multiple children, we can actually do a surgery to clear the blockage and then they can have ch uh, children naturally. But problem is with non-obstructive azospermia patients. Non-obstructive azospermia patients, again there are so many causes. There are again again two different uh, types of non-obstructive azospermia patients. One, initially there was some production and later because of some problem, the production has come down. This is one kind of uh, issue. And second kind of issue is by birth, there are there is no sperm production. So now we have to see these two things. So now uh, for some people where parents, uh, they have con uh, consanguineous marriage, uh, their children are born with uh, small testes or some children, uh, they have Y chromosome micro deletions. These are the various genetic types, karyotyping ab abnormalities, Klinefelter syndrome, Down syndrome for some people CFTR gene mutations. So these kind of patients, they have, uh, these are called genetic issues. So most commonly asked question is doctor, there is no genetic problem in my family. How, how uh, why uh, I got this? So genetic problems may not run in uh, families continuously. These people, you see, you, uh, you may be the first person to have this kind of problem in your family because gene slowly, it gets altered over the time and once uh, there are there is gross variation uh, or when there is y chromosome micro deletions then it can lead to y chromosome uh, non obstructive azospermia uh, there are as i said there are two types of non obstructive azospermia one is previously there is normal spermatogenesis and after some uh, infections in the testis we call it as epididymarchitis generally suddenly swell, uh, testis becomes big patients will have severe pain and uh, after that, the function of the testis will stop. That is secondary to infection, sometimes because of radiation exposure, sometimes because of uh, uh, viral infections like childhood infections like mumps or even recent days with COVID. Some patients, they have COVID infection in the testis and production is uh, stopped because of the COVID infection. So after this, suddenly, production stops. So now in these patients, generally what we do is we, gen we generally do a procedure called TSA. TSA, which is called testicular sperm aspiration. And if sperm is there, immediately we have to freeze the sperm and we have to go for the IVF procedure. So now, now there are various procedures for sperm retrieval in non-obstructive azospermia. In obstructive azospermia, it's very simple. Just put a needle, uh, TSA procedure, trial, uh, once you do your TSA procedure, you get enough sperms, which are enough for IVF. You can do n number of uh, TSA, n number of times. Every time you want to go for IVF, you can put a needle and take sperms. 
So, regarding non-obstructive angiospermia, there are various procedures. I will try to explain them in next video. Okay, viewers, goodbye. Thanks for watching.